Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Alpha Heavy Gamer. Today I wanted to talk about an exciting addition to War Thunder, the Sukhoi SU-17 Fitter M2, or the SU-17 Fitter D, if referring to it by its NATO reporting name. As a side note, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, this Soviet heavy strike fighter is beautiful and absolutely needed for the Russian top tier lineup in my opinion. I think it will slot in nicely at 10.0 or even higher. The SU-7 BKL at 9.7, while nice, just wasn't cutting it because it lacks certain things the SU-17 has in abundance, namely firepower. Now the main star here is the SU-17 M2 fitter, but for completeness, I have to talk about how we got to this point with some quick development history. The SU-17s are developed from the SU-7 airframe. Think the BKL and the later BKM, which by the way we don't have in the tech tree. Among other design upgrades, Sukhoi Design Bureau needed to improve the landing and takeoff performance of its fighter bomber aircraft. During development, Sukhoi adopted the variable sweep wing, which improved takeoff and landing performance. But it was also found that the variable sweep wing at low angles also increased aircraft endurance despite an increase in overall weight over the SU-7 airframe. Even with the new wing, the SU-17 shared high commonality with existing SU-7s in the Soviet fleet even while adding two additional hardpoints for a total of six. The SU-17 also shared many internal components such as hydraulics, avionics, and other electrical systems. Even though overall a much heavier aircraft than the SU-7 BKL, the SU-17 Fitter, aka Fitter C in NATO parlance, represented a revolutionary leap in aircraft design and a significant advance in fighter-bomber tactical capability for the Soviets and entered production in 1969. However, these initial SU-17 Fitters, Fitter Cs, only equipped an evaluation unit. The follow-on SU-17M fitter, a fitter C mod from NATO's perspective, started equipping Far East Soviet air units from 1972 in large numbers. The SU-17M fitter featured the AL-21F3 engine, a smaller power plant that was less fuel thirsty and with greater thrust than previous fitters. The 17M also featured improved equipment, such as a modernized bomb site and additional hard points for a total of nine. Finally, in 1975, the SU-17 M2 fitter, also known as the SU-17 Fitter D, was introduced. This aircraft, which is the one Gaijin chose to go with, featured a laser rangefinder with optical sight combo, improving target acquisition. It also had a new bomb sight and a gun sight and a new integrated navigation system. This aircraft was capable of automatically flying to the target and delivering its ordnance. In this version, you can also see the DIS-7 Doppler system fairing under the nose. Let's talk firepower. The SU-17 M2 fitter is armed with two internal 30mm NR-30 cannons. It can carry on its hard points the KH-25 inter-surface missile known as the AS-10 Karen, the KH-29L air-to-surface missile, known as the AS-14 Kedge, and the R-60 AA-8 AFIT air-to-air -air missile. The 17M2 could also carry various unguided munitions, such as rockets and bombs. Although I don't have access to the dev server, it appeared that the 17M2 was carrying four R60s in addition to ground ordnance. This machine is going to be able to wreak havoc in ground RB. Unfortunately, it does not appear the fitter M2 gains any kind of infrared countermeasures, such as flares. So unfortunately, its survivability may suffer until we get an M4 version. 
But with so many versions of the fitter going around, I could be wrong. Gaijin also surprises us from time to time as well. So the possibility that we'll get more fitters in the game is likely in my opinion, just due to the sheer number of operators and the amount of variants the Soviets pumped out. I haven't even talked about the more advanced follow-on versions of the fitter like the M3s or the M4s or even the two-seat var two variants. However, I want to clear some things up on the naming conventions because many fitter variants were for the export market. So for a quick reference, the SU-17M fitter, also known as the Fitter C in NATO parlance, was exported as the SU-20 Fitter C. The SU-17M2 fitter, also known as the Fitter D, was exported as the SU-22 Fitter F. The SU-17M3 fitter, or Fitter H, was exported as the SU-22M Fitter J. The SU-17M4 fitter, Fitter K, was exported as the SU-22M4 Fitter K. The operators of these aircraft were numerous and included many Warsaw Pact operators and many other Soviet client states outside the Warsaw Pact. The SU-17 fitters saw combat in numerous theaters in the Middle East, Africa, and even in South America with Peru. One infamous incident occurred in 1981 when two Libyan SU-22 fitters were shot down by U.S. Navy F-14s from the USS Nimitz in the Gulf of Sidra. Other major combat instances include the Yom Kippur War, where the Syrian Air Force lost several SU-20 and 22 fitters to the Israeli Air Force. Syria has also used the SU-20 and 22 in its own internal civil war against insurgents, resulting in one being shot down in 2017 by a U.S. Navy F-A-18E Super Hornet. Aircraft of the Fitter family are still active today in various air forces around the world, with nearly 3,000 airframes being built. Hopefully, we'll see more of the Fitter in the game, and Gaijin will toy around with giving us the M3 and M4 variants. So if you made it this far into the video, thanks. Just want to remind you that if you like this, to like and subscribe. Again, I'm Alpha Heavy Gamer, and I'll see you guys in a future video.